led the team in homers last year, hit one last weekend. Now faces the 2-2. Breaking pitch, waits for it. Actually caught a pitch high in the zone, but it's out to right field. Cowles is under it. She makes the play. And there's one gone. And Cowles, you could put her anywhere. Started her career as a catcher. Then she moved to third. And since is playing the outfield for Stanford. He's just in it to win it. And we'll tell you a lot more about Cowles as the weekend marches on. Maya Felder from the right side of the plate takes the pitch low. It's 1-0. Felder is the DP today for the Ducks. Another player that has excelled in Pac-12 play this year. She's hitting 380 in Pac-12 contests for the homer and 10 runs batted in. Now the 1-0. She takes one down and outside. It's two balls, no strikes. Continue to, continuing to attack the hitters in that exact spot, low and away. Yeah, it's been a slow offensive start for both teams. The Cardinal one for seven, the Ducks are one for five. 2-0 to Felder, not thinking about that one. And that was a good decision, the pitch is high. They count 3-0 and Felder has as good an eye as you'll see on this Ducks team. 17 walks this season. 329 hitter, five homers, 18 runs batted in, but not gonna swing the bat here. Walked on four pitches. Heads over to first, the first walk for Kraus today. And Alyssa Brito will hit with a runner on. And for Felder Jordan, that's only her first walk, or excuse me, that's her second walk now since the UCLA and Washington series. So nice to see her getting back to where she was before those two series. A little bit of jersey controversy. We had a discussion in the press box before the game. We thought Brito was going to wear 40 today, potentially because there was a rip in her jersey. But there she is. In her normal 33, Brito chops one over the head of Kanashiro, the third baseman in the left field, fielded by Young, the shortstop near the line. And Brito didn't hit it hard, but perfectly placed against Kanashiro, who is playing in for the sacrifice. The Ducks have two on with one out for Val Wong. Second time now that Kanashiro has played in on a chopper that She's had to field going over her head and for the second time, although the first was called out on a illegal grounder, as we said, but the second time the runner reached safely. And when you hit 372 like Brito does, you're bound to get a few like that. She's smiling over there at first. Valerie Wong, number 99, playing first base today with two on and an out. Tall and tight on the first. It's one and out. Oh. Wong is a 259 hitter. Hasn't hit a homer yet this season. Her only extra base hit is a double and has driven in seven. Meetings going both ways. It's been a good start for Reagan Kraus. And that was certainly in question because, well, she really struggled the last two times she went out there against Arizona and Arizona State. And yeah, I know they're some really good offenses, but you, I think you put Oregon on par with those two offenses. In her last eight and two-thirds innings, she's given up 14 earned runs. That's an 11.95 earned run average. Before those two series, she was dominant. And that includes against other Pac-12 teams like Utah and Cal. Against those two in particular, she has a 1-4-0 ERA in 20 innings. As that pitch is on the inner edge, a ball and a strike, so perhaps it was an Arizona aberration. Yeah, it certainly looks like she's looking like the pitcher before she met the Arizona schools rather than what happened the last two times she went out. A ball and a strike and out. The Cardinal one, the Ducks nothing. Here's the pitch to Wong. She takes away. 2-1. So Felder over there on second. Brito's on first. Not a ton of speed on the paths for the Ducks. Though Brito will surprise you from time to time. She actually has six stolen bases this season. But blocked by Felder on second as the 2-1 missing. Three balls a strike. 
Morgan trying to tie this ball game up. Only hit for the Cardinal was just a mammoth moonshot to left field by Sparakis. Other than that, we've had a pitcher's duel. As the Cardinal get going with some action in the pen. Wong fouls it off. Off the screen behind home. Payoff pitch coming, the count runs full. Oregon fresh off two one and three weekends against the two top teams in the conference, two title contenders in the sport of softball and trying to get back on track. Here's the three two, swing and a miss, 67, blew a fire. Trouse picks up her first strike out of the ball game. Wong stopping Wagner briefly on her walk from the on deck circle to let her know what she just saw. And like we said, Though she's been sitting 65-66, she can reach back and throw at about 67-68, and she went there to beat Wong. Two on, two out. Here's Wagner taking a drop ball down low in the dirt. Ball no strikes. Lexi Wagner is in a little bit of a slump for the Ducks. Her average is down to 293, and she's 0 for her last 10. I'll be forgiven with a big two-out knock here. The 1-0. Wagner doesn't offer. That is in there for a strike. 1-1. One -on -one. And this is a situation the Ducks are comfortable in, Jordan, with 97 out of their 192 total runs being scored with two outs. It's been the theme of the season, but it's let them down a little bit the last two weekends. One on one, just a little bit outside. Two balls and a strike. And though Krause has pounded that outside corner, it's not like Mike Bartling, the home plate umpire, has been unfair. I think he's had a pretty good zone so far. Hitters count here, the 2 1. Swing and a miss. Nasty pitch. Breaking to the outer ankle. I should probably say the back ankle of Wagner. It's 2 and 2. Haley Cruz on deck if the inning gets to her. The Cardinal playing deep in the outfield. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. The pitch, swing and a chopper behind the circle. Krause leaps for it, can't get it. The throw by Huff, the second baseman, in time to beat Wagner at first, and the Cardinal escaped jail here in the second. Year has gone for her so far. It's been a tough start. Hitting 191, hasn't had any homers or triples. Has eight runs batted, and the only two extra base hits were doubles. 0-2 protecting, trying to avoid the eighth strike out of the season. And she checks her swing, no appeal. It's called a ball alone away. One and two. When she's faced Oregon in her career, it is usually not ended well. One, two, the pitch away, two balls, two strikes. In fact, Inouye is now a senior. She's never gotten a hit against UO. She's 0 for 18 career. Trying to change that, she's worked the count to 2-2. Two, two. Here's the pitch, stays alive. Now it's a back to the screen. And this is a hitter, Justin, that Stanford's really counting on. Back in 2019, that was probably the season that you'd call her best. She was a second team all Pac-12 player that year. She hit 309 that season, Dro drove in 31. 2-2 two -two to her. She hits one right back to the circle off the end of the bat. Yanez to Wong, one away. Just a real crisp throw by Yanez there too. She snatched that ball up and just immediately threw up, went over to first. Obviously a routine play, but Seemed a little annoyed maybe when she threw it over there. Earlier in the season, if you remember this, good for you. This is against Portland State. We identified the Red Fox, Rachel Menlove, for the Vikings because of her prowess, her dominance of Oregon throughout her career. The Red Fox, the uh, predator of the duck. First pitch to Cowles is high, 1-0. In a way, I'd say, is the antithesis of that. And she is now 0 for 19 career against the Ducks. Towels, meanwhile, has been pretty much good against everybody. 
though she is 0 for 1 today with a strikeout swinging. The 1 0 to the righty. She swings and misses. Loses her footing in the process. And it's 1 1. Cowles, there's always one player on an opposing team that you spend uh, just an absurd amount of time doing research on. Cowles is that player for Stanford, in my opinion. Just such a fascinating background. The 1 1 swing and a miss. <laughs> Again, not really balanced after she hacks at it. It's one and two. I don't know if we'll have time to get to all of it in this at bat, but one thing about her, she is one triple away from being the triples queen in the Pac-12. One, two, high, two balls, two strikes. One more, and she'll have that record alone. Right now she's tied with the Arizona le legend, Allison Johnson McCutcheon, with 22 triples in their career. 2-2. Two -two. There's a breaking pitch away, fills up the count. And Cowles giving Yanez her best right here. Great matchup that we'll see all weekend long. Cowles and Yanez, two of the best at what they do in the conference. Payoff pitch, base is empty and out here in the third. Yanez twists, contorts, and comes home. Breaking pitch, started high, broke down low. Yanez thought it was strike three. Mike Bartling disagrees, and Cowles works it back full and then works a walk. And that was just really great discipline by her. Held off on a couple really, really close pitches. You know that Yanez wanted to strike her out, although that's one of Cowles' strengths is not to strike out. This time she wins the battle. And she does. The second walk for Brooke Yanez in this one. So three Ks, a couple walks. All three strikeouts came in the first inning. Didn't strike anybody out in the second, and we are now with one out here in the third for Gindelsberger. She swings and misses. So one, 64 from Yanez. Gindelsberger was one of the Cardinal retired on strikes. And she whiffed and missed in the first. Trying to extend a six game hitting streak for the Cardinal. From the left side, here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss again, so two. A long secondary for Cowles at first, who does have speed. One of the best in the conference, 16 for 16. Pretty good, right, Jordan? I'd say so. They're not even thinking about sacrificing. Cowles can pretty much do it herself. 0-2 to Gittlesberger. There she begins to go. Pitch is high by Oh, McGowan going near the net. Makes a basket catch. She tags from first. The throw to second. They got her. Tara McGowan, what a play. She catches the pop-up near the net, turns, fires. And Home one. Cruz started off the game in, well, Haley Cruz fashion, just a little chopping grounder to short. Didn't hit it hard, but they had no chance to beat her. And worked a single to improve the average to 387. It's just been yet another great season for Cruz. She's now hit safely in 30 of 36 games this season. 0-1, grounded over to first. Good stop by Sparakis. To her feet, to the bag, one gone. Went to a knee to stop that one from going down the line. Delgado with one away. Not even Haley Cruz's speed could beat her down the line to first base there. Delgado was retired on the first. We thought it was a base hit, but she stepped out of the box as she swung on an infield single and was ruled out. Takes the first pitch out of edge for a strike. Delgado's been one of the keys this season, in my mind, for Oregon. It's been their only left-handed option to produce consistently. Really, their only left-handed option. No one, also a strike. It's 0-2. And one thing about Delgado that I like is she can shorten up when there are two strikes against her. And just put in a play, use her speed. Let's see if she goes to that here. And she starts the slap swing, but checks it up well in time. It's one and two. Board reads 2-1, and now they'll switch it. 
All two strikes. Kraus looking for her second strikeout. Inside edge. See you later. Right in there, right in there on the inside corner, and well, Delgado gave up on it. It came back to the corner. And two quick outs for Stanford. Second strikeout of the ball game for Kraus. Good pitch there. Yeah, and just going back to having her Delgado be the only left-handed hitter in the lineup, you do like to have a variety of hitters, but obviously for Oregon's offense, hasn't been the most detrimental so far. Ducks looking for some two-out magic. On a rope to second on the ground, a backhand stop. Huff to Sparakis. One pitch to get Bunker and to get out of the third. So Oregon has three hits, rather two hits, through the first three innings, and they've been held scoreless by Reagan Krause, who's getting back on track after a tough couple weekends in Arizona. The Cardinal won, the Ducks nothing after a 1-2-3 third. The fourth in a moment on KWVA Eugene, 88.1 FM. Upside. She's now a grad student at Stanford, but made her name no, known, I should say, up there in Northern California at Santa Clara, where she was a two-time All-WCC West Coast Conference. Honorable mention. 0-2 away. It is one and two now. And interestingly, has a fair share of international experience as a member of the Greek national softball team. She's competed in Italy, in the Czech Republic, among other places, the one, two. She stays alive off the edge of the bat and foul, one, two. She's coming into this series swinging a hot bat and she has continued that. Against ASU had two hits in three of the four games against the Sun Devils. Hit 500 that series, going seven of 14. She had two home runs against the Devils. And she's been a very solid hitter overall, Jordan, but even better in Pac-12 play. Her on-base plus slugging percentage ranks 17th out of 50 qualified hitters in Pac-12 play. One, two, on the ground. Hit pretty well to third. Sid has it across the diamond to Wong. 5-3, one gun. But she's not sweating it. She's already extended that hitting streak to six. The DP, Ali Kaneshiro. Hitting from the right side for Stanford. Kaneshiro struck out swinging to end the first. One away here in the top of the fourth. On the ground to short. Diving effort by Brito. It's Bayer and into center. It's Wagner who cuts it off in the gap, keeping Kaneshiro at first. The Cardinal get their second hit of the ball game on a grounder through. Nice diving attempt there by the shortstop, but couldn't quite get a hand on it, and it slips into uh, center field. Yeah, you never really know with Brito. She's made her fair share of plays that will make you turn your head and kind of shake your head. And that time couldn't quite get there. It looked like there was one hop that allowed the ball go, to go over her glove. Young lays down a bunt. Wong goes for the tag. Did they get her? No word yet. Nobody saw it. Wong is nodding to the home plate umpire Bartling to tell him that she did. And apparently he disagrees. So Young going for just a, a sacrifice bunt. It turns into a single and the Cardinal have two on with an out. Kaneshiro to second and Young on safely with a bunt single. Yeah, and a, a risky play there by Wong to go for the tag. I actually did think she tagged her there, but maybe should have just turned around and tossed it over to first and they don't end up getting the out. Well, Melissa Lombardi is out of the dugout again and right in the face of Bartling. Seems like Oregon has just gotten the short end of the stick in some of these calls this year, especially in Pac-12 play. And the reaction from Wong, I'm not going to pretend to to know that she tagged her, but I will say the, the reaction she had after she went for the tag looked as though, you know, she was expecting it out to be called. Yeah, she certainly looked confident. And as I said, to my eyes, it looked like she did tag her. So two on with an out. And the Cardinal going to their bench, going to bring in a pinch runner. Get a little bit more speed over there on second. And the pinch runner 
will be number 21. That's Caitlin Lim, the sophomore out of Irvine. A dangerous spot in this ball game. Stanford, no doubt, looking for insurance. It'll be the big lefty, Emily Schultz. She's been a good RBI option for the Cardinals. Driven in 23. And a crouch stance from the left side. She swings at a pitch. Let her high. Fouls it out of play. Still one. Schultz popped up to Burrito at shortstop back in the second inning and is 0 for 1. Just joining us, Stanford got a run in the first, but they're threatening here in the fourth. Looking to build on their 1-0 lead. A 0-1 outside corner, maybe a bit low, but a great frame by McGowan, it's 0-2. Sid is playing even with the bang at third, but everybody else in the infield playing normal depth. The outfield is straight away for the 0-2 pitch. It's swung on and missed. Breaking pitch. Schultz had no chance to get it. Low and outside to the lefty. Yanez picks up her fourth strikeout and gets a badly needed out. They are now two gone in the frame as Montana Dixon hits. And Schultz is another one of the Stanford hitters that puts the ball in play a lot. And obviously for Yanez, a big strikeout there with the two runners on. And we were talking about this a bit before the game. The first pitch to Dixon is tall and tight. Ball, no strikes. It's just, it's a clash here. Yanez, who's a strikeout pitcher, and Stanford, a lineup that likes to put it in play. So far, they've done just that. The three strikeouts in the first, but only one since then. 1-0 in there for a strike. 1-1. One one. We also saw Yanez strike out two hitters in the first inning that weren't necessarily strikeout hitters. And as well, giving up a home run to a team that doesn't hit home runs. So it just goes to show you how you can't uh, portray your expectations to what actually you might see in the game. 1-1 one, one coming in to Dixon. She checks her swing, doesn't matter. Call a strike anyway. One and two. She walked her only time up today in the second and was stranded at first. By Stanford, the pitch over to Huff, who is covering. Rather, that was Sparakis covering. And McGowan trying to catch the defense off guard. Can't quite get to the bag. One gone in the fourth. And I think this is a really big inning for the Ducks, Jordan. Oregon is 22-1 and one after leading, uh, after four innings have been completed. They are 2-7 and seven when they are trailing. And now it's Rachel Sid, one out in the inning. Nobody on. McGowan going for the ambush bunt, and Stanford was all over it. Sid skies this one over the bullpen, out of the yard, and foul. She flew out to right her first time up, so it's good that she's trying to go to the opposite field. That's when she's at her best. So the home run last weekend against the Huggies, Huskies, she just pulled it and demolished a grand slam to left field. 0-1, now it's 0-2. Gave up on that pitch away, and Reagan Krause is in the zone. Still just pounding the outside of that strike zone. See where she goes on 0-2. Only has two strikeouts today. She again works it to the outside part of the plate, but wastes one well outside looking for Sid to chase. She doesn't. Three and a third through for Kraus. Two hits, no runs. Two Ks, just one walk. And she has managed that on just 48 pitches. One, two. Dixon has to reach for it. The pitch didn't look too bad. But missed location. It's two and two. Oregon looking for an injection of energy. Fewer fans in Eugene today after Oregon has moved Eugene, Oregon moved up a level to high risk. So just family today, and the count is full, three and two. And Stanford's been in some high risk situations too today, Jordan, and been fortunate to get out of there and escape. That's true. Payoff pitch coming to Sid. She swings, checks her swing. She throws her bat, 
looking to sell the call, but she will be retired swinging. It was like she checked her swing, knew she was gonna get rung up, didn't hear the call for a second, so then trying to plead her case, flip the bat to, towards the dugout. And by the time she did that, they made it official. Reagan Kraus, what a performance. Two away, base is empty for Maya Felder. She walked on four pitches in the second. Down low and away. One and oh. Maya Felder, a player for Oregon. So consistent. Transfer from New Mexico State, originally from Fresno. Doesn't dominate the headlines like some other players, but just continues to swing and do that. Look at balls, 1-0 to 2-0. She is ahead 6-0 against Reagan Krause today. And it prompts a meeting in the circle. What do you think here? Do you try and get on, Justin, move the line to Brito, or do you just, ahead in the count, take a big swing and try and tie this game? Yeah, I think you go for a big swing here. You got a 2-0 count. You have a hitter that likes to put the ball in play. And I think you just take a big swing, and if it doesn't work out, you have the fifth, sixth, and seventh innings. Quick meeting. Two balls, no strikes. Base is empty. In the last of the fourth inning, here's the pitch. That is a strike borderline. It's two and one. Maybe at the at the knees. What what do you think, Justin? Yeah, I think that was a, a, a generous call. It's good frame by Dixon. Hitters count two one. She has to go down to that one. High chopper. Great play by Kraus. A basket catch off the chopper. Flips to first. One two three in the fourth. Oregon goes down in order, and Kraus has retired eight straight Oregon Ducks. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. We are through four full innings in this pitcher's duel. So far, it's Reagan Kraus. 0 for 2 is Huff and 1 away here in the fifth. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jordan, it hasn't seemed like a lot of balls have left the infield besides that home run for Stanford. Yeah, you're definitely right about that, particularly for Oregon. New hitter is the righty, Christina Inouye, the third baseman. She has to duck out of the way. Had a pitch and had eyes for her helmet. It's one to know. Nina Way looking for that first hit against Oregon. We'll monitor that all weekend. The 1 0. She swings and hits one hard. Medium deep left. Delgado started going to her right, then came back to her left, settled under the ball, grabs it out of the air. Two away. Yanez, really just that one mistake, Justin. But other than that, she's just kind of floated along. Not a lot of high-stress moments. The Cardinal did bring two aboard in the fourth. One was on a bunt. She got out of that jam. But other than that, just low stress going about her business. Yeah, Breaking Jordan. pitch is low to Tegan Cowles. It's 1-0. Yeah, and she hasn't had that many stressful innings. It seems like she's in control of the game and just looking for her offense to give her some run support. It's 1-0 to Cowles. Donna's wheels and deals. Pitches away. Two balls, no strikes. Didn't want anything to do with Cowles her last time up. Or she worked back into the count, ran it full, and then worked a walk. Two balls, no strikes to the Stanford leadoff hitter. 2-0, that breaks in there. Two and one. That was a nasty pitch, Jordan. Cowell's friends on the team, they've joked about this. She doesn't ever look at a number. She, she just doesn't care. And 2-1 is inside, 3-1. and one. If she did look, I think even she'd be impressed. She's hitting 356. She has 16 stolen bases. So she was caught in the third inning. I don't know if that was, I don't think that will count as a caught stealing because she tagged from first base. Anyway, the 3-1, she swings this one on the ground to the right side, outside the bag and foul. 
And the count is full. It's three and two. That was really close. Yeah, that was about as close as it could get. I actually thought it might have been fair. Wong just missed it going down that right field line, uh, first base side. And luckily for the Ducks, that one just slipped barely foul. Full count, two outs. That could have been the record-breaking triple if that was inside the bag. Full count, 3-2, here it is. Cowles hits a chopper to short. Brito, let's see the arm. It's a little low. Cowles gonna beat it out. That's gotta be an infield single, and that's how they'll rule it. Thought for a moment Brito might have a chance just because of that cannon she has. Wong couldn't hang on, and I don't know if it would have mattered anyway. Yeah, she's too fast, Jordan. Brito was at the very edge of the dirt, almost on the outfield grass. She got a pretty strong throw off, had the body underneath her, but Cowles just was too fast down the line. There was no way she was to get her there. You wonder if Gindelsberg takes a pitch to allow Cowles to try and steal a base. And she begins to go as a secondary. Gindelsberg is not thinking how I'm thinking. She swings at the first pitch and fouls it out of play. It's 0-1. And it was a pretty good swing. Fouled it straight back and you know when they say that you foul it straight back, it means you almost hit that one. The Cardinal have a runner on. There are two outs in the frame. Top of the fifth, Stanford one, Oregon nothing. The 0-1, swing and a grounder to the right side, it rolls foul, it's 0-2. And, and Cowles is moving over there at first base. Trying to get a good jump. She knows that McGowan is among the best in the Pac-12 at throwing out runners. I mean, how could she not? After the play that ended the third, it was a pop-up by Gindelsberger, who's now hitting. She tagged from first, headed for second. Anyway, there's a strikeout. Down low and away, Yanez picks up her sixth of the game. And we are through four and a half innings. Stanford one, Oregon nothing. The Ducks look to get on the board with Alyssa Brito coming up on KWVA Eugene 88.1 FM. KWVA. 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 Ranger Station, Ranger Speaker. Yeah, hi, I'd like to report him. She's spectacular. Owen oh, 2 to Brito. Frisbee pitch at 49 away, 1 and 2. And if you're asking me, if you're thinking about Pac 12 Pitcher of the Year, she is at least in the conversation right there with Faremo and Garcia from UCLA and right there with Gabby Plain from Washington. That's how good she's been. Now the 1 2. Goes inside, it hit Brito with two strikes. Sinking action, and it caught, I believe, the forearm of Brito, and the Ducks get a runner off of Elena Vodder. Jordan, the Ducks are trying to do something today they haven't done all season. They have not made a comeback while trailing in the fifth or sixth innings of a ball game, and that'd be the first time they would have a win if they did this, uh, if they did that this, uh, this during this game. Valerie Wong is next. Well, Zabrito on first. She has some speed, six steals, and seven tries. Cardinal playing for the sacrifice with the corners in, and here it comes. She gets it down, but it rolls with backspin foul. It's 0-1 to Wong, and she has to come back and try it again. So Elena Vodder, 14-4 this year in 108 and two-thirds innings. Suddenly giving up 19 earned runs. She has 101 strikeouts, only 21 walks. She ranks second out of 25 qualified pitchers in the Pac-12s and home runs allowed as well. It's the sophomore. Bunt laid down by Wong. Only played a first. The sacrifice a success. Brito moves to second. And Wong going to get some high fives as she returns to the dugout. It'll be Lexi Wagner hunting the big hit to tie this game at one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And that's a great play by Wong. You know you're going to get an out. You know, you know the outs are going to come throughout the game. You want to make your outs count. You want to move the runners over. You don't want to strike out. So that's a great play by Wong to get that bunt down. What a great time it would be for Lexi Wagner to break out of her 0 for, 0 for her last 11. Breaking pitch, high and away, 1-0. Dixon has to reach up high to get it and prevent it from going to the backstop. Unless we see some sort of double play, which is unlikely. Haley Cruz is also going to get a chance to swing the bat as she waits on deck. 
The 1-0 coming to Wagner. Wagner swings and bounces it foul. Even the count at one lost her right hand on the swing, as she often does. And that's why that bunt is so important, Jordan. You give not only an opportunity for your number nine hole, but the top of the order and Haley Cruz is right there. It, it lets you Wagner, it'd be tough to see a double play happening. So it looks like Haley Cruz will get an opportunity to hit with a runner in scoring position. One on one, Wagner and Vodder. Oh, a slow pitch, 49, pulling the string, but it goes away. And it's two and one. And Stanford's catcher is talking to the ump on that one. That looked like a pretty good pitch to me, Jordan. Elena Vodder, last year as a freshman, one, four, eight, and nine and one. It's been even better as a sophomore. Here's the two, one pitch. A little bit high, two and one missing. It's three and one and the difference that she can pull off in velocity. That time worked it up to 68, and that was following a pitch that was just 49 miles an hour. I think right there, that, that alone is a reason why she's so good. Yeah, and I think you can see that they're still executing the same game plan against these Oregon hitters. Different pitching style than uh, Krause, but still going away against these Oregon hitters, trying to stay out of their power zone in the inside. Meeting in the circle of Vodder. The Ducks meeting in foul territory outside the left field line. Brito returns to second. It's three and one to Wagner. And I wonder if you put the, you just have her take here. I doubt it though. You get a good pitch, you can tie this game up. Yeah, that's a tough call, Jordan. I think that if you get a good pitch here, you have to put a nice swing on it, but you know, obviously you're looking to take a walk to put the top of the order up with two, uh, multiple players on. Vodder only has four losses this year. Three of them have come in Stanford's last two series. The three and one breaking and it misses. Wagner kind of did a double take yep. and then she goes to first. Two on for Haley Cruz and Oregon has not only the tying run on, but they have the go ahead run on base. A similar situation to Sid where, I think it was Sid where uh, Wagner basically immediately threw down her bat and walked over and then she turned back to check, got the okay from the umpire and she kept walking over to first base. Oregon has relied on Ailey Cruz in big spots all season. Had some hit, huge hits against the Beavers, against the Utes, certainly against UCLA. Can she come through here? The pitch breaking away, it's 1-0. Today she is one for two, had that infield single to shortstop to lead off the home half of the first for the Ducks. Brito on second, Wagner on first. Bottom five at the Jane, the corners playing in. Vodder and Cruz, here's the pitch. Slow breaking ball, 48 and called a strike. One and one and Cruz she stepped for it, and I don't know quite how to describe it, but that pitch looked like it was in slow motion. I mean, it's just a huge miles per hour difference. 66 on the previous pitch, 48, what was it, 48, 49? Yeah, it was 48, barely registering on the right field scoreboard. 1-1, one, one, Cruz goes after a pitch, bounced it foul. It's one and two. And she tried to speed her up there. Cruz was able to get a foul tip on that one, but pretty clear that that was supposed to be uh, an out pitch for uh, Vodder there. And Cruz, you know, this is a great matchup here. In her career, she usually plays up to good pitching. That's the type of player she is. She's excelled in Pac-12 play. She's excelled against Rachel Garcia. The one, two, narrowly away. What a take. That was it's two and two. Excellent discipline there. Could have been called, was close to being called at the very least, and just a nice take by Haley Cruz there. Two balls, two strikes, and out, two on. The Cardinal won, the Ducks nothing. Here's the pitch, Cruz swings and hits one in the air down the right field side, foul territory, Cowles can't get it. It's into the corner. It's a track meet to the plate, Brito comes in to score on a stand up RBI game tying double for Haley Cruz. One to one in the bottom of the fifth. Who else but Haley Cruz, right? 
Cowles overran that one toward the right field line. Looked like it might have gone foul. It bounced over her head, fair ball, went into that corner. And a, what a play for the Ducks off of Vodder, one of the best pitchers in the Pac-12. Cowles, who's an excellent defender, misplayed it like you mentioned. I thought it was going foul, hit on the line. And because both Wagner and Brito had to hold up so long, only one of them is able to score. But the Ducks still with a chance to pour it on here and turn one run into a crooked number. Hannah Delgado is 0 for 2 today. Fodder pitches. She checks her swing and holds off a ball away. Infield playing way in right now, Jordan. So a game tying RBI double for Cruz. She has been the ignition for this offense. Let's see what gear Oregon is in now. Bounce to second. Here's a play at the plate. Huff throws home. The tag applied by Dixon. And Wagner was too aggressive. And the Cardinal get her at the plate. Two away in the fifth. She was running on the grounder. Cruz is able to go to third. Delgado's at first. And great defense by Stanford second baseman Huff. The tag by Dixon. Two gone in the fifth. Allie Bunker tries to give Oregon the lead. Wagner made Huff make a good throw, and she certainly did, and a nice tag as well to get her. Two outs, Bunker sees a strike, out of edge. So Elena Vodder came in for Reagan Krause, who was throwing a shutout. Vodder was going for the save. She's been the best pitcher for Stanford this year, and. After that change was made, Oregon gets a run. And it was earned. 0 on to Bunker. She hits one on the ground to third. Inouye has to throw across the diamond and beats Bunker by two steps. So the Cardinal get out of the inning, but the Ducks tie the game on a run. They have a hit in the frame, a hit by pitch, a walk, no errors, and the Ducks strand runners on the corners. New ball. Cardinal coming to the plate with Alini. Sparakis. Sparakis, excuse me. Sparakis, the only hitter to see Giannis today at that homer in the first. It's been a hot hitter recently. Base is empty. Top six. The Cardinal looking for the lead. Here's the pitch. She digs, tries to dig one out. Chases one low and away and gives Giannis the advantage. It's 0 and 1. Brockus was thinking about that home run she hit in the first inning. Wanted to do that again. Yeah. Fortunately for her, not a good pitch. That's something Stanford doesn't usually do. Very disciplined at the plate, but she chases a ball there. It's 0-1. Chases another one. Slow chopper to Sid. Hard throw to first. In time for the out. And Oregon has taken Val Wong out of the game defensively and has replaced her with Taya Bird. The freshman from Cloverdale, California, coming in for defensive purposes. Next up for the Cardinal is Ali Kaneshiro. She's one for two with a single to center. 423 and a freshman, a pitch. Swing and a miss. Up high on that one, it's 0 and 1. Kaneshiro, last time she was out there, the Division one softball freshman of the week. Long break doesn't seem to have affected her much. She does have that single. Hit it pretty hard. Rolled through into center. It's one and one. That was the play that Brito almost made at shortstop, diving after it. One, one, one out. Wheeling and dealing the pitch from Yanez. Odd break that moves away from the right-handed hitter. It's outside, two and one. Kanashiro, press the battler's shoulder, now is ready. Here's the two one. Grounded left side and foul. Just barely, and it's two and two. That one had eyes for the corner. 
So Oregon getting on the board for the first time in the fifth. Reagan Kraus was dealing. Oregon couldn't hit her. And then the Cardinal go to their ace, Elena Vodder, and it turns out it was the wrong move. Two and two. Swing and a pop-up inside the infield. The captain, that's Brito, makes the call on the catch behind the circle. Two away. And if you're Stanford, you look at this game, I mean, it goes exactly according to plan. You save innings for Vodder. She's bound to throw a whole lot this weekend. You get scoreless innings out of Kraus, setting up Vodder to just close it. Yeah, it seemed to be a great situation for them, but unfortunately for them, they have to deal with Haley Cruz. That's right. And a backdoor pitch missing. A little bit away to Emily Young. So all of a sudden, they have to refocus themselves. Two away, bottom five. Want to know to Emily Young. She's one for two. 1-0 -oh pitch, high and away. Two balls, no strikes. Young, her hit was that bunt single in the fourth. It was attempted to be just a sacrifice, but Valerie Wong missed the tag. Now she's not playing there anymore. I wonder if the two are related. 2-0 to Young, taking a pitch at the knees. It's now 2-1. Samaria Diaz warming up in the bullpen, Jordan. I wonder if that's because of the doubleheader. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, he's had a, been pretty solid in relief recently. 2-1, foul back to the screen. It's now 2-2. Two two. Young has had some success against the Ducks in her career. Back in 2019, she went 5 for 8 when the Cardinal took 2 out of 3. She had her second career home run that series. It was off Jordan Dale. And four runs batted in over that three-game set. Here's the 2-2, two -two, just a bit outside. And Yana is staring down Mike Bartling, letting him know how she feels, how she disagrees with that call. Just love her intensity on the mound. She just has a real fierceness to her when she's in the circle. Pay out pitch. Swing and a pop up behind him. McGowan Lynn lunging. She got it. What a day defensively for Tara McGowan. Full extension onto her belly to get out of the inning and set the Cardinal down in order. 1-1 one, one to the bottom of the sixth. Oregon looking for the lead. You can catch it on KWVA. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, a 1-1 one, one game. Tara McGowan just laid out to end the top half of the sixth. Hits and swings at the first pitch of the frame. Deep in the hole at short. Tries to beat it out. The throw beats her. Great play by Emily Young. Fires a bullet to Sparakis. And there's one away in the bottom of the sixth inning. McGowan is 0 for 3. Yeah, McGowan hustling down the line there. Only got thrown out by a step. Almost came back and got a hit after that nice play. Diving behind the plate. But unfortunately... Didn't quite get enough on that ball. Here's Rachel Sid, bottom of the sixth inning. Sid today, 0 for 2, a fly out, a strikeout. Elena Vodder leans back, lets loose. Oh, there's the breaking pitch. That time put a little bit more on it and catches the corner at 51. It's 0 and 1. And they better watch out for Alyssa Vodder getting, or excuse me, Elena Vodder getting. Uh, Settled in. You don't want ever want to see a best pitcher get settled in. Oh, one, a swing and a miss. Looks like that might be the case, Justin. It's 0 and 2. It's been a fun ball game to start the weekend. Cloudy day here in Eugene. Perfect t shirt weather. 0 and 2. A little bit away. Sid lays off a tough one. Not a big crowd on hand. All the dugout, all the energy coming from those dugouts. Right now it's Oregon, the latter of the two. Well, winds and fires the one, two, back doors her, and she looks at strike three. 
So Vodder, she's a great strikeout pitcher. She picks up her first of the contest. And the Ducks, nobody on. Two outs here in the sixth. It's Maya Felder's turn. Yeah, and she works with a pretty quick pace, Jordan. We saw Rachel sit there, take a quick timeout just to slow her down a little bit. Maya Felder is 0 for 1 and waits for the first pitch. She swings through it. 67, she's pounding the outer quadrant. Has picked up her 102nd strikeout of the year and Melissa Lombardi pauses, wants to speak with Felder in the middle of this AB. Such an important game to set the tone for the rest of the weekend. The second today will not count for conference play. That is unless we're rained out tomorrow or Sunday. Which I don't think is all too likely. These two teams would be a huge win for both of them. For Oregon, it would right the ship in a way after a two and six stretch against two of the top teams in the nation. Now the 0-1 coming to Felder. She's going to watch another and take a tough pitch low and away. A ball and a strike for Stanford. It'd be their biggest win of the season. They get a win against ASU, but winning here at the Jane would be quite the accomplishment. 1-1, one, one, swinging a grounder to short, running after it young. Throws as she moves left and gets her at the bag to retire the side in order. One, two, three for Elena Vodder. She's settled down after giving up a run in the fifth. It's one to one. She's going to take a pitch, and it's called a ball. It's one to no. Brickianas looks like she has a lot in the tank. It wouldn't shock me if this goes past seven, if she still remains out there, though Samaria Diaz is warming the pen in case there's an issue. 1 0, tall and inside, two balls, no strike. And actually, the Cardinal going to bring up a pinch hitter in Kate Cressley. Cressy, rather. An interesting card to pull. She's 0 for 7 this season with two strikeouts. 2 0, though. She swings and fouls it back to the screen. Perhaps the home run card going to be played by the head coach for Stanford. That is Jessica Allister. As the Cardinal at 23 and 11, made the postseason in 2019 for the first time since 2013. The 2-1 bounced foul, two and two to Cressy. Two balls, two strikes. Yanez grabs some dirt. There's the glove, the ball in her mint. Winds and fires, a check swing on a pitch away and she held off, it's three and two in the Cardinal dugout, loves what they're seeing. She hasn't even been on base this year, but she does have an RBI. Three, two, looking to get on for the first time this season, the three, two pitch is grounded outside the bag at third foul and she'll get another chance. Montana Dixon next, then Sydney Huff. This is the 6 7 8 spot of the Stanford order. The Ducks will bring up 7 8 9 in the bottom of the seventh inning. Looking to walk it off. Full count deal. Swing and a line drive. Brito got it out of the air. If she didn't get over there, it would have gone to the wall. Instead, Brito snags it. And there's one away in the seventh. An important play by Oregon shortstop. Yeah, and Oregon's defense in the outfield was shifted over to the right. But I like what you said, Jordan. I think that ball would have still gotten to the, the wall, even if it would have uh, gotten past Brito. And they're still shaded a little bit right of dead center. At least Wagner is. Pitch with cutting action, missing away to Montana Dixon. So for one today, struck out looking in the fourth. Did walk though in the second inning. See Delgado is playing almost in left center field, out in left field. A lot of space down the line as the 1-0 comes. And the pitch soars above the zone. Two balls, no strikes. 
Giannis has been so good since that first inning. Six in the third through, just four hits. Six strikeouts to a lineup that doesn't strike out much. He's walked a pair. It's up to 90 pitches, and here's the 2-0. Her 91st pitch of the day is fouled behind home into foul territory. Lucky fan picks it up. Two and one. And really, Yanez has only made one mistake this entire game, Jordan. Dixon digs in. Swings and taps it, and the count's evened up at two. So here we are in the top of the seventh inning. When you get into these types of games in Pac-12 play, defense becomes so important. How you run the bases becomes so important. And a matchup that could mean so much for both teams. Here's the 2-2 to Dixon. Low, and the count runs full. It's 3-2, and two, and the Cardinal making Yanez work for it here. She takes a quick stroll before this 3-2. Base is empty. Coming into Dixon. She swings. It's a line drive. This one's caught at second by Bunker. So the Cardinal have barreled it up a couple times here in the seventh, but right at Oregon's defenders. Two lineups, lineouts up the middle, and there are two away in the seventh for Sidney Huff, who will swing the bat with the bases empty. You know, run one right to Brito, one right to Bunker. Maybe one will have uh, run, run right back to Yanez, right in the middle. Left on left matchup, a swing and a miss. 63 elevated. Corners playing in. We'll reset it for you quickly. Sid and Brito left side. Bunker at second. Taya Bird has come in for Valerie Wong at first. Still Delgado Wagner Cruz left to right in the outfield. The 0 1 is chop foul. It'll be McGowan who's playing catcher to go retrieve it. Oh, and two. Ducks trying to escape this one with a win. Get in the dugout and try and walk it off in the seventh. It's been a quiet offensive day to say the least. The 0-2, front door, got her. Rack them up, that seven strikeouts for Yanez, and she gives Oregon the chance to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh inning. She goes one, two, three, and she has now retired 11 straight Cardinal hitters. Back in a moment, the Ducks, Brito, Wong, Wagner to walk it off when we come back. KWVA. 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 Would it be crazy if you just stopped everything, packed your bags and left for a week, a month, a year? What if you left for two years? Would people think you'd lost your mind? What if you were going far away to help in a village on the edge of the Gobi Desert? A village crowded with Buddhist temples. Not Down low, it's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, that was to cap off an 8-0 run rule win in six. The Ducks swept the final weekend before Pac-12 play. A grand slam to walk it off. This one, I think, would mean a little bit more. Two balls, no strikes. Vodder checks her band. Wheels and deals the pitch. A check swing headed for the edge. And she is attacking that edge. Splits the corner. It's two and one. Brito is one for one today. Singled in the second. Was hit by a pitch by Vodder. It's the first hitter that she faced back in the fifth inning. Two one. Brito lays off another nasty movement. That time. Maybe an inch or two away, it's three and one. And Alyssa Brito hasn't hit a home run since March 26th against Loyola Marymount, but it should be a pretty good time for that. It would be her 10th of the season, the 10th of her career. The three one, Vodder. Brito swings and it's a line drive into right field. Cut off in right by Cowles. Oregon has the win. Down to it, you only need one run. And you have the you know, top of the order looming. So it'll still be Wong. That sack bun in the fifth, her first time up in the second. She struck out swinging. 
Stanford's defense is certainly expecting the sacrifice. The winning run, Gailey on first, pinch running for Brito. She gets the bunt down, back spin out of play. Nothing in one. And it's always tough to get a sacrifice down when the other team expects it. So it'll be interesting to see if Wong does get the ball in play, if she's able to get that sacrifice down. Ducks enter the day, fifth place in the Pac-12, half game behind Arizona. Trying to get back above 500 in Pac-12 play. Here's the 0-1, bunt is laid down, it's a beauty. Vodder throws to first, the sacrifice is success. The winning run on second. Valerie Wong, it's not gonna show up a whole lot in the box score, but two important bunts out in the eight hole. And Lexi Wagner trying to break out of that 0 for and give Oregon the win. And like you said, Jordan, that was a great bunt. Got it in front of the catcher enough where she couldn't make a play on it. Vodder had to make the play at first. And a great bunt by Wong. She is 0 for her last 11. She's also going to bunt, pull back. And it's 1-0. Haley Cruz is on deck. She is the only run batted in for Oregon. Had that double that just scraped the right field line on a high fly ball. Probably misplayed a bit by Tegan Cowles in right field. The only time Oregon's been on the board. It's a 1-1 game in the bottom of the seventh. Vodder throws and missing away. It's two balls, no strikes. And if you're Vodder, how concerned are you about giving up a walk here? I'm not sure you're too concerned. The only problem would be that means Haley Cruz, Delgado, and Bunker are the next three up. Two balls, no strikes to Wagner. She swings and misses. Two and one. Ducks looking for the walk-off win, a comeback effort. Brooke Yanez has shouldered a whole lot of the load. Now the Ducks trying to pick her up and give her the win, the 2-1. Wagner hits it off of her left ankle. On a ground to the left side, it's ruled foul. The count is two and two. Cruz on deck is two for three. It's been a tough go recently for Vodder. Three of her four losses in the last two weekends. She relieved Reagan Kraus, who was throwing a shutout, and now deals the two to a breaking pitch. And Wagner can't wait for it. 52 called a strike, a filthy pitch. And yeah. there's two away in the bottom of the seventh. And Wagner just couldn't pull the trigger. It was right on that outside edge where Stanford pitching has been attacking Oregon all game. And here's the matchup you want with the game on the line if you're both teams. Fodder, the ace of the Stanford Cardinals staff. And Haley Cruz, the All-American outfielder for the Ducks. She's two for three. And she takes the pitch high and away. I think they, they might just be putting Cruz on. Dixon is standing behind home, and it's going to be an intentional four to Haley Cruz. They want to see the freshman Hannah Delgado. That pitch, again, is away. It's two balls, no strikes. They want nothing to do with Cruz, who has two of Oregon's four hits, and their only run batted in. They have their eyes on Delgado, who is 0 for 2. That one again outside, it's 3-0. Oh. Wonder if Cruz one comes a little bit too close, might, if she might think about swinging, and she doesn't. A four pitch intentional four to Haley Cruz. And let's see how the freshman Hannah Delgado responds. She's had some big hits this year. Of course, the one that comes to mind, the RBI go-ahead triple. Game one against Utah in the Pac-12 opener. Is she built for this moment? 1-1 one, one game, bottom seven, two on, two outs. Fodder and Delgado. Delgado has said that she locks in in these moments. She takes a strike on the outside corner, it's 0-1. She thrives on these moments. Melissa Lombardi 
has agreed with that sentiment. Has been so impressed with how she's dealt with all that's been thrown at her this season. The 0-1, gonna take another, this one missing, one on one. Of course, a lifetime infielder before Melissa Lombardi asked her to play the outfield to get her bat in the lineup. She's run with it, she's played a solid left field this year. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. She slaps one foul to the left side. It's one and two. Brito got the rally started with a hard line drive single to right. Gailey came in to pinch run for her after a sacrifice bunt and a strikeout. Haley Cruz was given the intentional four and here we are. One, two, two outs, two on. 1-1 one, one in the last of the seventh. Here's the pitch. A grounder down the first base bag. It's fair into the corner. Coming in is Gailey. She slides in safely. The Ducks win. Two to one. Well, hold on. A late ruling by our first base umpire, Eric Hawthorne. He wants to talk it over with Mike Bartling. He ruled it foul. Bartling thought it was fair. And here comes a conversation to decide the game. And Melissa Lombardi can't believe it. Oregon thought they had the walk off. She is right in Bartling's face. And she can't believe it. So forget all of it, folks. Hold on, there it is. It's called Fair Oregon wins. And now we see a conversation with Jessica Allen.